Hello, it's good to see you. Today we are going to be making something called a pig picking cake. Now this is something that um, is popular in the South and other parts of the United States as well. And this is a very simple cake. It's um, not hard at all. This would be good if you've never baked before. This would be a good one to start with because it doesn't have many ingredients and it's very easy. Um, I'm going to read a little bit to you about pig picking cakes. They're always a big hit when you take them anywhere. A pig picking is a tradition in the American South, a big party where a whole pig is roasted and served up for family and friends. It's quite an event and one that all participants from guests to cooks take a great deal of pride in. And what pig picking is complete without a pig picking cake? This cool and sweet treat is the perfect way to end a big savory meal. No, there's no actual pig on the ingredient list, but sweet pineapple, tart oranges, and cool whipped cream that come together in a refreshing combination of sweet and citrus atop a very humble vanilla cake. But who says you need an official pig picking in order to make one in your own home? This recipe is the perfect sweet treat for any summer gathering. And it, it really is perfect for summer because it's very light. It's not a heavy, super sweet dessert. And here are the ingredients, and I have them laid out here. You're going to need one box of yellow cake mix. Doesn't matter what brand. Um, this is a Duncan Hines Butter Golden Cake Mix. You will need three large eggs, which I already have in my bowl. A third of a cup of vegetable oil any brand it doesn't matter you just need a third of a cup of that and one cup of water which I have here uh, one can of mandarin oranges drained so you're going to open this up and just drain all the liquid out one can of crushed pineapple you're gonna need the 20 ounce can so it's one of the the big ones like this the can of oranges is 11 ounces so it's smaller. Um, and you will also need one box of instant uh, jello, oh, sorry, jello instant pudding mix. You need the 3.4 ounce box. Um, I grabbed the wrong size by mistake. This one is um, 5.1 ounces. So I'm just going to measure out a little over half of this for this recipe. If it's not exact, it's, it's really okay. And a container of Cool Whip. Uh, any kind of whip topping um, and it's cool whip is a non-dairy whipped topping it's like a whipped cream substitute and you get it in the, the freezer, freezer section um, I know several people from other countries have asked me about it um, it's it's a general purpose thing we use it for a lot of different things um, and they have some different uses on this particular container you can layer it in desserts uh, make breakfast extraordinary like put it on your waffles eat it like ice cream and it's actually not bad that way to take a spoonful of it when it's frozen like it's still frozen um, normally you will let it sit out until it thaws a little bit dip fruit top hot chocolate and make smoothies delicious and they even have uh, recipes like if you lift here and pull it up they have recipes for things that you can make with your cool whip so this is going to be thawing out while we do the rest of it. I just took this out of the refrigerator or out of the freezer. So um, I have some extra bowls here to put things in. Um, and I'm also, one thing I'm going to do, and this is a neat trick, I don't know if you know it or not, but um, this is going to go in a regular round cake pan. And I'm gonna save a little bit of this uh, cake mix in a separate bowl so that when I grease and flour my cake pans, I'm going to use this so that when you take it out, it doesn't have, like instead of using regular flour, it's not going to have just flour stuck all over it. It'll just be a little bit of cake mix. It's just a little thing I do with my cake mixes. So we're going to get started with the first step. Okay, I have everything ready for step one. Actually, step one was to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, which I have done, and you also have to grease and lightly flour two nine-inch nine inch round baking pans. 
and I did that just like I said I um and it's not perfect I know but I greased these two pans and I used a little bit of the cake mix to kind of uh, coat it a little bit right now I have a big mixing bowl here and we move on to step two and in step two, we're going to take this, we're going to beat in the cake mix, eggs, oil, and water until moistened. That's the first part of uh, step one. So, I've got my cake mix here. See? I've opened it up, and I cut it open to get a little bit out to grease my pans with. So, I'm going to pour this in there. And again, you can use any kind of yellow cake mix. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I don't really recommend any particular brand or anything. They're all basically, to me, they just all kind of taste the same anyway. Okay. All right, so there's the cake mix. I'm going to add in next the eggs. So I've got my eggs right here. Pour those in there. Three eggs. And then the oil. Got a third of a cup of vegetable oil. In there. All right, cake mix, eggs, oil, and water. So I got a cup of water. Okay. And you want to just stir this together until it's moistened. Break the yolks. There we go. Let's stir that. You don't have to worry about it being perfectly broken up and everything. There are going to be lumps in there, and that's okay. You can use an electric mixer if you want to, like a hand mixer. And I may do that before it's all over with. Um, but those are loud, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that at this part. And as the yolks break up, you will see the yellow of the yolks appear. Okay. Let's see what the next step is. The next step is... Okay, now you want to reserve four or five of your oranges for decoration because after you finish with the icing, when we get to that part, you're going to arrange four or five little orange slices on top just for decoration. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to take my little glass and I'm going to look in here and find some nice looking orange slices. Don't get the ones that are all ragged and depressed. Get, you know, some, now yeah, I, I don't like Let's see. Let me look at this one here. That's a pretty one. Take that one. And you have to be careful not to tear them up with your fork. There's another one. There's two. Ooh. Three. Um, I don't like that one. Four. There's a good one. five that one's cute okay so I just want to make sure to do that first before I forget and just dump the whole can in there so we have our can of oranges and I'm just gonna dump that in and I have drained these so I got all the liquid out and uh, so it's just the oranges no liquid at all after you put them in there um, you add the remaining oranges and beat until well blended. So you're not going to have whole chunks of orange in here. You're not really going to be able to see the oranges because once you beat it thoroughly, it's going to break them up. And you're just going to have bits of orange in your cake mix. And you can only really go so far at this point stirring it by hand. I think I'm going to grab my electric mixer and mix it just a little bit more before we add this to the pans. Okay, I have now beat this with um, an electric, like a hand mixer. 
and it, I don't know if you can really tell that it looks all that different but now there are just little bits of orange in there it's not whole pieces anymore and I only beat it for maybe a minute it didn't really take long so now what we're going to do now that we've done that we move on to step three where we will pour this into baking pans and bake it for 22 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center of the cake comes out clean so let me grab a pan where I can pour them in and this is not an exact science you just want to try to get half of it in one pan and half of it in the other I like to keep a spatula handy to kind of get it off the side a little bit if it drips it's not the end of the world there's one let me get the other one now let's see if I can pour some more in there we'll move this out of the way now you see how it kind of coats the bowl you can take your spatula and just scrape it along the sides. You want to get all that goodness out. You don't want to waste it. And there's our second one. Now, we're going to take these and we're going to bake these at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 22 to 25 minutes or until the toothpick comes out clean and then we're going to move on to the next step okay my yellow cake mix stuff is ready I just had to show you this before I go on to the next step look how beautiful these are and it smells so incredibly good in here they're nice and springy the toothpick comes out clean look how beautiful it's just I love it I almost don't want to cover it with anything. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do now, we have to let these cool for about 10 minutes and then we're going to take them out. I'm going to take them out and put them on a cooling rack. Which looks like this. It's just a wire rack. You can get these in really any store like Target or Walmart or wherever. And they have these little feet where it holds them up so it's up off the table or the counter and it allows the uh, cakes or whatever you have on here bread or anything to cool and air will get up under here and help um, circulate so you don't end up with sweat you know the the moisture accumulating on the bottom so I'm going to let these cool for about 10 minutes and I'm going to take them out and let them cool a little further on the rack and then while we're doing that while that's cooling we're going to start on the uh, the icing for this lovely cake all right so the cakes have cooled and I did the hard part this part always makes me nervous taking them out of the pans I'm always afraid they're gonna break um, this one ended up a little hollowed out here um, but it came out and it's such a pretty orange color it doesn't really show on here so much but it's a lovely uh, orange color it's definitely not the color of your traditional yellow cake mix and it smells great and the other one I've gone ahead and taken off the rack and put on a plate so it is ready for put it, applying the frosting so what we have to focus on now is preparing that frosting so for the frosting we're on step four uh, in a bowl you're going to add the pudding mix and the pineapple that's the first part so I have opened my can of crushed pineapple and I've opened my packet of pudding mix but like I said earlier um, I'm accident I accidentally got the wrong size box so I'm going to need a little over half of this but again it doesn't have to be exact it's I'm just going to take it and pour some into this bowl here but if it's if it's not exact it really doesn't matter about about that much that's fine 
it's it's okay all right so we're going to do the pudding mix and pineapple and my cat is begging to go outside because the neighbor's dog is in the it's in their backyard back there and she wants to go out she likes to go out there and taunt the neighbor's dog because there's a fence between us and them and when she goes out there that dog just barks and barks and barks it's terrible she's she's meowing a little bit she's at the back door trying to get me to let her out and I'm not letting her out because she just torments the dog so if you hear a, a pitiful meow that's that's my cat so here's our pudding mix see nice and fluffy and we're just going to put this in here just pour it in like that and then this part we're going to mix up so take our spoon and we're mixing the crushed pineapple and our pudding mix lovely ultra yellow color because the pineapple is already kind of yellow but then when you add the pudding mix it's it just amplifies it super yellow it's like a highlighter got crushed up in there all right now stirred that in just like that and I have my uh, whipped topping for the next step. The next step is that you will um, fold in the thawed whipped topping. So you're not going to vigorously stir it. You're just going to kind of gently fold it. Just kind of fold it like that. I don't know if it's thawed completely or not. Um, we're just going to put, we're going to put the whole container in there. I've had it sitting out for a little while. So I was kind of hoping it had thawed sufficiently. Um, I think it's thawed enough. I'm just going to, I'm just going to dump it all in there. It's probably not the right thing, but. But this is just, um, Cool Whip is just a non-dairy, uh, fake whipped cream, basically. <laughs> That's all it is. See? Kind of looks like whipped cream. Real whipped cream tastes better, but, you know, in a pinch, this is, um, very convenient. And I know it's not good for you. You don't have to tell me. And you just you just take it and fold it so you see I'm not vigorously mixing it I'm just gently kind of picking it up and laying it down like that kind of like Bob Ross would do with his paint sometimes just kind of gently leaving it kind of marbledy or marbly whatever you call this paint sometimes marbly <laughs> and that's it that's your frosting that's that's basically it and this is what we're going to add to the cake so for the next step we're going to get the plate with the first layer and then we're going to add the frosting to the cake starting with the first layer and then we will place the second layer on top and then we will frost that too and after we do that we add our five orange orange slices and then you pop it in the refrigerator to cool and set for a little bit, and then you're all ready to go. So we're going to start now on frosting the cake layers. All right, now we have our first layer. It's you can't really see it, but it's on a it's on a plate. It's just clear. And to add the frosting, which I have here, I have this little silicone little tiny spatula. Um, now I am not very good at frosted cakes. I will just tell you. Um, <laughs> I'm not that great at it so what I do the way I do it um, I just start in the middle I just add some to the middle and spread it out like that I try not to put huge dollops of it in any one spot because I want to try to keep it nice and even Oops, see it goes over the side um, no I am NOT a professional cake decorator or anything um, 
Definitely not. So this is not going to be perfect. <laughs> but with a cape this good, it doesn't have to be perfect. No one is going to care. As soon as they get one taste of it, it's not going to matter what it looks like. Because they're going to tear it up anyway. So just spreading it over the top and then we're going to do the sides. You can actually buy cake stands that, that rotate like a, a Lazy Susan uh, to turn while you, while you decorate it or ice it. I'm just trying to put it down along the side here a little bit. I'm just kind of going over the edge. Of course, we're going to add the other layer in a minute. Um, that's the one with the part missing. I'm just going over the side a little bit. Going around the edges here. I have plenty of frosting, so I don't have to skimp at all. I could actually um, make it a little neater. And what I will do once I'm all done is I can come around these edges with a, a paper towel or just a tea towel or whatever I have and kind of neaten it up, like wipe all that off there to make it, you know, to make it look nice and pretty. <laughs> but it, it, um, it smells great in here. Adding the orange to the cake mix it's just it's like an extra layer of heaven. You can really smell it when it's baking. It smells really good. So this part doesn't have to be perfect because again we're gonna add another layer. I'm gonna put a little bit more and make this a little bit thicker. And of course frosting is great if you have a little hole in your cake like when you take it out of the pan and there's a little boo-boo. <laughs> you can use frosting to fill in the holes or use it like glue. <laughs> if you have um, a layer that broke or and didn't come out completely right, you can use the frosting to kind of glue it together. <laughs> so it's really useful. All right, now let me grab the other layer. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try. Let me move this over. Let's see if I can do this. See, the layer is on here, but it's actually kind of stuck <laughs> to, the, uh, to the rack. So I'm going to have to try to figure this out. Oh, look. It almost came off completely clean. Yeah, set the rack down. My hands are very clean, I promise. I washed my hands. Now you want to try to set it on level. Or, you know, so it's directly on top okay awesome so now that's on top of there that went better than I thought it would <laughs> uh, I don't do this often enough to feel confident about it but look like I said this is a very easy cake so then of course we just start applying just spread on the frosting and it spreads very easily it's very light and fluffy. It's not like a thick, heavy um, cream cheese frosting or anything like that. You know, those sometimes can be kind of hard to spread. This one is really fluffy and light. And this would be such a great cake for your first uh, baking venture or if you're, you know, baking with your kids, you're trying to help somebody learn how to do it. I think this would be a great cake to start with. Because it's, it's easy, it's yummy, there aren't a lot of ingredients. And you can make your own frosting. If you don't like the store-bought frosting, which I'm not a big fan of it, uh, it's just too sweet. Um, this is a wonderful frosting because it's very, very light and fluffy. The sides take a little bit of extra time to get it to go all the way. And you have to kind of fill in the cracks like you're working with spackle or something. Because, you know, you have two layers of cake. So you have to kind of cover and fill in those layers. Yeah. 
you know, you, you do, it gives you quite a bit of icing or frosting to work with. So you just go around and around. And the more you do it, the, the better you get at it, obviously. But yeah, I don't make cakes very often. I make birthday cakes for my kids. Actually, both of them this year wanted a Costco chocolate cake. They didn't want me to make a cake. They wanted one of the Costco great big chocolate cakes, so that's what we had. But I've made quite a few birthday cakes for both of them. Now my cat's meowing at the front door. I guess she figures if I won't let her out the back, maybe I'll let her out the front. <laughs> she really wants to go out there and torment the neighbor's dog. I don't think the dog is even actually out there anymore. I think it went back in the house. But once she sees that dog, she's she's always eager to go out there. And she doesn't really do anything. She'll just walk right up to the edge of the fence and just lie down and stare at the dog. It's just, it's brutal. It's vicious. And the dog just goes crazy. Okay. So you see, it's not a big, tall cake. So, um, all right, I think I've iced it sufficiently all the way around, and I actually have a lot of frosting left. Like, I have a lot. I don't know what I'm going to do with all that. But I'm going to neaten it up a little bit, and then we're going to um, leave it in the refrigerator to cool for a little bit, and then we're going to try a bite, and we're going to see how it turned out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I almost forgot my uh, garnish. My little, um, my little orange slices. I'll put them on there like that. One, two, three, four, and five. I want that one to go this way. There. Now I'm going to neaten it up and clean up around the edges here and then we're going to let it cool in the refrigerator and then we're going to take a slice and try it. Okay, we are back with our cake. It is nice and cooled. The plate's cold. <laughs> I just got it out of the refrigerator and I have my little plastic cake server slash cutter. And of course, with this being a pig picking cake, it didn't feel right to put it on a regular plate. So I just have a paper plate. <laughs> because if you were to pig picking, this is probably what you're going to have. <laughs> and a fork. Which is actually also plastic. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but it's all plastic. Okay. So I'm not going to take a big bite of this. I'm going to... um cut just a little bit. I just want to show you what it looks like. It cuts very easily. I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to put it on a the plate. There you can see what it looks like there. Now there are little bits of um, orange in there. And of course we have the pineapple in the frosting. And you can put the frosting on thicker. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had put it on a little thicker, but that's okay. You do have plenty of frosting with that recipe. So look at that. I'm going to try this. Mmm. That's very good. It's nice and fluffy. It's not... A super sweet, heavy dessert. It's very light. 
not calorie wise, but the taste. <laughs> I do wish I had put a little more frosting in between the layers, but it's still good. It's perfect for summertime. It's nice and hot out. It's perfect for um, any meal where maybe it's a heavier meal and you don't want a heavy, rich dessert. This is absolutely perfect. Mm. It's very good. And the frosting is, is just absolutely perfect with this cake. Whether you put it on thick or thin. Um, yeah, it's just, it's wonderful. It is so delicious. If you make this cake for any get-together, it's going to be very popular. I think it'll be a big hit. So there it is. Our beautiful orange pineapple pig picking cake. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you again soon.